We're once again continuing our day one strategy guide for MW3. So once the game drops, you can use some basic strats to start fueling your team with some strategy going into your first GBs or wagers or whatever you're starting to play uh, with your friends once the game drops. So we're moving on to Karachi Search and Destroy once again. This time we'll be looking at the defensive side and this is going to be a standard spread. So this is something that you can use as a default for your team if you wanna just reset everything on the map and you don't really wanna overwhelm one of the two sites on defense. So let's get right in. To it. All right, so we're going with our classic 2010 gameplay over here. This is from a PCL lower bracket finals between Next Threat and Rush. As you can see here, this is going to be the first player we're going to be spectating. This is basically going to be our anchor towards the A site. So as you saw, he climbs up uh, the ladder here off a of spawn and then goes to the right towards this castle here. And he really just uses this as a head glitch. You know, it's a really important head glitch for this side of the map because you can basically see anyone that's running out towards A here. Obviously, you see him get a kill as a first blood in this round, but you know, really Really making sure that you use this heady to your advantage is going to be super key. You can probably even snipe this if you wanted to too as well. Uh, so this is going to be your anchor towards the A site and now we'll move over towards the other side towards the B site. Now here we have the anchor towards the B site again another AR player so he's going to be holding this lane and making sure that he can watch under this bus to see if anyone crosses over towards the bomb. It's really important to make sure that your right lane over here is covered and we'll talk about that later on when I do the overhead to see what lanes are actually open and angles are actually open that you could be exposed from while you're playing this sort of defense. So it's a pretty simple spot. And if you do get overwhelmed from someone who's pushing you from this close lane, and let's say you don't have eyes on it from your other two sub players, then the person who is playing that anchor towards the A site can actually turn and look towards this way. You know, while he was on that vertical position, he'll still be able to at least somewhat get your trade if it's only one guy. But if there's two people that rush you right at the same time, it's gonna be really hard. So you do wanna have some help from your other teammates if you're playing this specific position towards this B site. Now here's where a third guy at right next to this a site so he's in a setup with that guy that was on that anchor position and so anyone that might be exiting towards uh, this a arch and going towards that a site is going to have to both you know challenge that one guy that was on the head glitch but also make sure that they cover this close angle here on this guy so he's really just playing this ratty position to pretty much use the other guy as bait for him to try and get a free kill so in my opinion I don't really care for this position too much it just seems like too much of a one and done spot and when I say a one and done spot you know if they use some teamwork and actually you know dive out of here or slide through here and really challenge you at the same time you know you might be getting one but you're getting traded out 100 so it's really hard for you to actually get two kills in this position just because of how well teams might be trading so this is a really good position if you just want to use it you know maybe once in a game and then never touch it again in another round so this is probably just you know one of those one-off ratty positions that you can use in tandem with that person that was on that height advantage now, the last guy in this spread setup is going to be working this broken building. This is a super important building for the defense to take control of. Like I was talking about in that previous, you know, rush strat back in, I believe it's episode two or three. You want to make sure that you're at least contesting this building because if the offense can really take control of this building, they can get a free bomb plant towards that B site. So you want to make sure that you're at least getting info, contesting it, just being really annoying in this broken building. And what you could do is actually help out your teammates, whether it's, you know, from that B side or whether it's through that middle open area over here to the left you know you really want to make sure that you're floating in between those two areas just trying to get as much info that you can on the offense and relaying that to your teammates so that they can adjust and adapt off of that so i'll quickly play the round out for you guys as you can see here impulse once again going to this head glitch spot he's going to get a free first blood on this guy trying to go towards this a site and then as we move around you know he's still holding this position waiting for more players on the offense to try and take towards this a site and he's going to be working in tandem with this guy below the scaffolding uh, towards this A site, making sure that he can actually get over his position. B side, we have the guy playing under the bus, and then we have our guy contesting the broken building. But what do you know? The offense does get a couple kills towards that A site. They not only get the guy who is holding that angle towards the top, but they also get the guy in the one-off position that I was talking about before. So again, if you do lose that initial positioning where you're not able to hold that anchor spot anymore, this guy in, under the scaffolding is basically a free kill for them and he'll be lucky if he at least gets one of the kills uh, but if anything he's getting traded out but they do get both of them without getting a trade so 2v2 situation vengeance actually does get a kill with the ump here but he gets instantly traded out with the semtex now it's just a uh, random 1v1 ryu is going to go into this broken building and basically just try and play a one-off position he's basically taking a gamble that this other player is going to try and wrap towards this side of the site instead of just planning towards the a site so as you see he's just playing this corner waiting for a 
bomb to be planted, but Nightmare is going to walk up these stairs and Ryo is going to get a free kill off of it and they're going to win the round. So it was actually a really close gunfight, but he does end up getting the headshot win for that and they win the round. So we'll take you into a more deep dive on what the strat looks like from an overhead perspective and you'll get to see a better sense of what I'm talking about here. All right, so we're going to draw it out here. Obviously, we have the anchor position at the top castle over here. We have our guy playing solo B watching under the bus. We have our guy contesting the broken building. So he's going to be playing around here somewhere in that vicinity. And then last guy is going to be in this closed corner here, one off position. In my opinion, I don't even like this position anyways. Like I'd rather you play a position where you're still roaming uh, and trying to get info for the team, still spreading out the map, but not in a position where you can instantly be traded. So maybe over here in case you want to play this cut so you can escape any sort of pressure, whether the pressure is coming you know, from this side, you can escape towards the site and get some help from your teammate on this anchor position. Or if they're going to bully out towards this A site, you can still play uh, like a little offy this way and make sure you're not playing to get instantly traded by the offense. Or you can even roam, you know, I want to say it's just like a church building. So you can basically use this uh, little fountain thing as a heady and make sure that you're holding this cross uh, for your B-sided player. So you're helping out this guy. So in case anyone on the opponent team uh, rushes through this bottom hallway and is trying to instantly hit this guy out, you at least have that cross and have that info that you can relay to that B-sided guy right away. And it's a really nice flex position where you can go back towards this A site and help in case they go towards this A site. So you're basically holding both of the sites and holding angles so you can basically play both positions. In this spread setup, we're really utilizing these flex positions where these subs can basically work either of the sites, uh, whichever they want, uh, based on their positions. So you have those two anchors, you have those two flexes, and now you can basically work the map based on the info that you're getting and where the pressure is coming from. So to talk about the lanes that you really need to cover, like I was talking about before, if you're playing this position uh, with that AR and really just watching under the bus, you really need to make sure that your hallways are covered here. So anyone that might be coming from the offense, instantly pushing towards this side, maybe even tacking you out, you really need to have help there in case they want to play aggressively like that. So it, whether it's having this guy in the building contesting, you know, playing this corner and watching this cross for anyone uh, that might be pushing through, they can't see you in this corner while they're trying to push that hallway so whether you're off angling yourself like that and making them hard clear you that's a pretty good position or if you wanted again that a-sided flex player to play this fountain and watch across the whole time you could do that then you could have that anchor guy that was over here basically playing to make sure that if there is pressure coming towards that b-side he instantly turns and can have this help over uh, your b-sided player so you're really making sure that you're prioritizing that help in case it's needed right away and then let's look at the mid lanes here so these are some lanes that the enemies can you know utilize to try and go towards like a mid to a or mid to B. In this position, you know, this church guy can instantly have this cross. So anyone that might be coming towards the front door, he has them and should get a free kill like that. But if they go towards this mid to A through this cut, uh, you're kind of left out of position. So in that case, you might want to have the guy that's contesting roaming in this broken building uh, to be watching for anyone that might be pushing that way. So he can see that lane as well. Then you have your main A archway. Uh, once again, your anchor position should be locking that down completely. So if anything, I would say that this guy contesting over here has the biggest job because he's basically going to need to be that roamer for your team making sure that this entire like middle map area is covered especially if they go on top of this high ground over here so you want to make sure you have eyes on that and if you want even more help what you can do is actually just send this guy that's proning over here to work with you inside this building you know as long as you're maintaining control of this broken building you can have eyes on that bomb especially if you go towards this balcony over here like I was talking about in that previous video so even if you don't have a guy over here watching under the bus once you get two guys inside this broken building what you can do is then have the cross from over here and you can cover the b site that way so if you don't want to play super passive like this i completely understand and you can just have two guys contesting this way and then you have your same guy anchoring over here and then your final guy roaming you know whether it's a church position this one-off spot or one of these cuts over here you do have some options in this type of play now if you watch the how to play a spread 101 video i'll link in the description if you haven't seen it already but the big thing about this type of strat is to make sure that you're prioritizing staying alive because you're playing a spread you don't have multiple numbers towards one site in actual you know full-on tradable positions so you have to buy a little bit of time for your teammates to try and get your help while they're moving toward your side but that's going to do it for this strat video hope you guys enjoyed thank you guys for making it to the end of the video and i'll see you guys in the next one